Now, we all know that spring is just around the corner, but the workplace woes and surviving a slumping economy are harder to weather. Dr. Srikumar Rao is a professor of business and author of a new book, Happiness at Work. He's here to help us navigate through these trying times. Thank you for coming in. My pleasure, Don. I, I should start by saying that most of us are happy just to have a job because uh, so many people don't. But of those who have jobs, a recent survey by the conference board says that only 45% of U.S. workers are actually satisfied with their jobs. Why is that? Because we have very high expectations and we don't accept what life is giving to us. We strive, but this is the really important point. We strive to achieve a goal which is good. But we strive with the intention, if we achieve it, then we succeeded and life is fine. And if we don't, we failed hmm. and life sucks. By definition, any outcome is outside our control, but actions are within our control. If we invest in the outcome, we're setting ourselves up for failure and therefore unhappiness. So we should focus on the process rather than the outcome. That is exactly correct. We can invest in the process, not the outcome. Now, uh, you've gotten a nickname of the happiness guru, but your definition of what happiness actually is might surprise some people. It might not be exactly what their definition is. Yes. Uh, I define happiness as an ongoing state where you know that deep down you are fundamentally okay. You will always be okay. You cannot but be okay. As long as you're in the human predicament, stuff will happen. But even as you do what you have to, that sense of I am okay and always will be, the, will be okay remains with you. How important is it to have friends at work who you can share the experience with? It is good to have friends at work. And if you have a certain attitude, you kind of attract people who, are, who resonate with you. And, you, and I find that the more you are anchored in a particular emotional domain, the more likely it is that you do have friends. Hmm. But as Chris said in that piece there, being around <coughs> negative people, people who are making you unhappy, it's not always possible to avoid them at work. They might be a coworker or even your boss. How do you deal with that situation? It is not possible to avoid them, but it is possible to not let their negativity affect you, or at least not affect you to the extent that you let it. But how, how do you do that? I mean, it sounds good, but how do you, I mean, somebody you're, you're working closely with who just gets on your nerves, how do you not let their negativity affect you? All right. Uh, let me give you an example. Many of the persons who take my programs work in the financial services industry, and a lot of people, especially bosses, are quite toxic there. And I ask them to think, along these lines. When you think of this toxic person who's your boss, can you see that there is anger, insecurity, rage, and all of these negative feelings sloshing about in them? Hmm. They nod, yes, I can certainly see that. Hmm. So well, now think of this. You only have to deal with this person for maybe a couple of hours a week. This person has to live with himself <laughs> or herself their whole life. Hmm. They all burst out laughing as you did. <laughs> but that laughter is important because within that laughter, there is compassion. Hmm. And all of a sudden, you see the person not as someone who's dumping on you, but as a human being stuck in With his or own her struggles. own predicament. And you when you do that, when you enter a transaction from that space, the nature of the relationship changes. Hmm quite dramatically. You also make the point that uh, so often we focus on the bad things that have happened to us during the day rather than focusing on the many good things that have happened. That's exactly correct. Yeah. In fact, that's one of the keys to the programs I conduct. Whenever something happens to us, we have a tendency to label it and we either label it as a good thing or a bad thing. Hmm. The point is, we honestly don't know. Hmm. And you look back on your life and things which you said, hey, this is bad, actually turned out to be not so bad or perhaps even good. So why label it a bad thing? Yeah. Great advice. I wish we had more time to spend with you. This is good. We just got started. Dr. Sri Makar Rao, thank you so much for coming in with us. And listen, good luck with your book. I know it's gonna, uh, people are going to benefit from it. Thank you so much, Don. My pleasure to be here. Have a great day. <laughs>